Okay, thanks, Greg. Okay, um, as Greg said, uh, we're on the uh, webinar of Forage for your property information to assist with grazing land management decisions. This is part one, currently available information, and webinar three in the Getting the Inside Edge in Grazing Land Management series. Uh, on behalf of the Grazing Land Systems team, uh, past and present, all this information is available uh, through the Long Paddock website. So let's go through uh, what we're going to talk about today in the webinar on our roadmap. What is the forage system? Our forage data sources, where do they come from? How do you access forage into the system? What support information is available for forage? Then we're going to go into some uh, common land management questions, cover 10 of the forage reports, uh, albeit briefly revisiting the land management questions with forage, have a look at the forage track record, have a summary and a wrap up. I just acknowledge that uh, all this work's done from the drought and climate adaptation program and reef programs um, and we acknowledge um, their support. So what is forage? Well forage is an online information system accessed through the Long Paddock website. That's the URL there. It generates and delivers property scale customised reports on climate, pasture, ground cover, land condition indicators and satellite imagery. At the moment, it's Queensland only. That's a schematic there where you, the user, will contact the Long Paddock website, get into the forage system through the forage page, select a report of your interest and what forage will do is get whatever information is required whether it's satellite Im imagery or climate data, tree cover data, crunch grazing systems models into seasonal outlooks, or ground cover information, put it together in a template for that report and email it to you as a PDF. We currently have 12 different reports and more of those are in development. We'll cover those uh, in, in the next webinar on the 29th of November. It's being used by graziers, extension officers, consultants, policy, agribusiness and education. Can, can facilitate grazing land and environmental land management decisions. The report information is for use in conjunction but not a substitute for hands-on monitoring and managing. Okay, let's start the data sources. Firstly, uh, climate, the Silo Climate Database. Well, Silo offers point climate data in model-ready formats from 1889 to present. In terms of rainfall, evaporation, solar radiation, temperature, vapor pressure, everything you need to, to drive a pasture growth model. We use the BOMB data, and that's the stations across Australia. It's Australia-wide and we interpolate those stations into a five kilometre grid. In the future, um, we, we hope to get that down to a one kilometre grid, so um, it has finer resolution data. So essentially, we're looking through 1889 to yesterday, right across Australia on a 5K grid. Um, for more about silo, you go to Long Paddock and you can see the, uh, the tab there that you select and if you want to get climate data, that's where you get it from, all free. Next is our grazing systems models. Um, and we aim to combine major aspects of climate, pasture and the grazing environment together. And we do that through, um, through the GRASP model, Aussie GRASP and uh, the, the, the GRASP point model. So you can see here um, a, a number of aspects here where we'll bring into the uh, the climate aspects through rain, radiation and temperature, but we also have plant growth here that's driven from infiltration, evaporation, uh, uptake of water and nitrogen, uh, death and decay of the plant, transpiration, consumption and trampling of animals. We add fire in, uh, infiltration and deep drainage and, and nitrogen dynamics. So whatever we've got data for and, and uh, the, the science is good enough, we, we try and uh, uh, put into our grazing systems models. Um, if you want to read more about that, you can go to the Aussie Grass 
uh, website there and um, it, there's more detailed explanations available. Next is uh, the remote sensing data. It goes into forage, so our um, remote sensing centre here at, uh, in, in, at Ecosciences provides uh, ground cover imagery from 1986 to current, including uh, bare ground imagery, seasonal green and non-ground green uh, cover imagery, and foliage projective cover, FPC, so the tree and woodiness cover. Um, but you can also see Veg Machine online to, to get a, uh, a handle on the uh, seasonal fractional cover in a, in a dynamic sense. Okay, moving on to how we request forage pro property reports. Firstly, you go to the forage website there. You can see the, the button, the tab that you would, you would click on. You will see a screen like this. And on the left-hand side here, um, we can first read about forage, and then we have um, a string of the reports available, and we'll have a look at those in a minute. And we've got down the bottom our awareness videos. So any videos that we have on forage, we'll, we'll, we'll put into, um, into this tab down here. So how do you request a report? Well, firstly, you go into a drop-down menu here, and you can select one or, or up to 12 reports at one time, um, and they'll come up here. They'll be listed here. You can, you can uh, remove them if you like, so, but you can, you can order up to 12 at one time. Then we go into specific, specifying your location based on a lot on plan as we used to. Um, so if you know your lot on or lots on plan, you can, you can list them in, in this, um, in this uh, space here. However, we've made um, uh, big improvements on, on the ease of ordering the reports. And if we go down here, simply if you're on the property, we can um, press on the geolocate button here that will take you to your location. And then you can select your lots on plan from the digital cadastral database, the DCDB, um, and, and select one, one or more um, of, of the lots on plan here. Um, the, uh, the, the, the lot on plan will come up here and you will, you will uh, press on add and, and, and the lot on plan will come up into this space here. And you keep on clicking, they will keep on adding up here um, to, to add to the series. You can also uh, enter your property name, and if it's if it's a uh, an established property name, uh, you can uh, enter that in. It will give you choices of of what to select, and then you press on it. You can also put your road address in there. So if you put your the, the number and the name of your road, it will come up in a, uh, in a in a drop down here as well, and you can select you can select the one that's um, applicable there. That'll take you to that location. You go through as I've described there clicking on your lots on plan and um, we move on then to the delivery information. You add your email address. You can add a label if you wish. If you don't put a label there, it'll default to the, um, to the, to the name of the uh, report that, uh, that, that, that will be coming your way. Okay, you hit submit. There will be a screen that comes up um, with uh, the, the success of, of the submissions. Um, and depending on the complexity or, and, and our, uh, uh, the, the, the server at this end, how, how um, congested it is, uh, they, they can be arriving within minutes and the more complex ones um, up to hours um, and um, they'll be winging their way into your in inbox. Okay, so a new um, uh, addition we've had here is the ability to subscribe for selected reports. At the moment, it'll just be the drought assessment report that we'll, we'll cover in a minute. So if you, from the drought, the uh, drop down menu, select the drought assessment report, it will, um, it will figure in the, uh, in, in the box. And then we go through the normal process, which is specifying the location. And then you'll see a screen like this down the bottom. And that subscription service will allow you to receive a report either one, two, or three months. So every 30, 60, or 90 days as you uh, take, take the selection here, or you can leave it off. Um, if, if you want to unsubscribe from that at any time, um, you'll send an email to the long paddock, all one word, at qld.gov.au, and we'll, we'll take you off that, off that list. So we'll be adding some other reports that, that are uh, 
sensible to, to get at different um, uh, periods there. And of course, you would put in your email address and your label as we've described before, hit submit, and that will lock it in. You'll, you'll get the report for the day, but then uh, you'll also get the subscription added into our system. All right, let's move on. Um, in terms of forage support, how, uh, how do we uh, cater for people with questions and, and uh, answers? Well, there's within report information, and we'll cover that as we go through the, the, the actual reports. So they're, they're pretty, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of information within the reports that explain the information. Next is the web page inf information. Um, so we, we generally, uh, for a different, for each different report, cover what the report is, what's included in the report, a report sample, and common questions and answers about the particular report. Next, we have a two-page quick guide. So um, you, you can download that from the website, or it's uh, something that we either mail out or, or have at uh, workshops, a two-pager relating um, the, the reports that you can get, uh, uh, what, what the reports are, and, and how to obtain the, the forage reports. Then we have the heavy duty uh, detailed forage guide um, that, that explains all the uh, reports, including how, how, how they're put together, what data goes into them, um, and, and a sample of the report. Awareness videos that I just showed you on the last screen are available, and it shows how, to, how you would uh, tie up a number of different reports into answering a particular question. So um, you can click on those, and they're short videos uh, to, to relate the different reports. Instructive videos we're yet to do, but we plan to go through and um, uh, do different combinations of, of videos by themselves and how you tie different uh, reports up into different scenarios. And of course, you can contact us at uh, Long Paddock with, with any questions or queries, and we'll get back to you on, um, on, on uh, what, what you're having trouble with, whether you're having trouble getting the reports or have questions about what's in the report. Now we'll go on to a couple of uh, common land management questions. And that might be, um, is this season different from last year or even five years ago? What parts of my paddock are bare? How many cattle do I run until next season? Do I need more water points? Why does this paddock have less cover in it than, than that paddock over there? But there'd be others that you'd know of, and they're, they're all linked to property planning or investment, sales, grazing land management, best management practice and accreditation. So let's uh, go through now, and we're going to start the reports proper. Okay, the first one and, and the first report that was actually um, uh, in, in the series is the rainfall and pasture report. Now we're going to cover um, what, what's generally in, in the different reports, um, and that's, that's sort of repeated through, through the series. So first up, you'll have a title bar, which will have the name of the report. It'll have uh, the website that it came from, the date that it was ordered, the lot or lots on plan, and, and the label, um, all up here on the title bar. We then come to the introduction of the report. It will give you enough information there to relate uh, what, what's available in, in the first page. And, and, and the subsequent pages um, where, where it was, uh, where, where the data's come from. Then there'll be a location map generally, and you look for the crosshairs, make sure that you've got your property in the right location. Um, always check for that. Then we go to the summary here. So summary statistics, for instance, here we've got rainfall and simulated pasture growth for, for um, the annual average, total for the last 12 months. And then we have annual percentiles, uh, the 10th, 30th, 50th, 70th percentile uh, for, for rainfall and pasture growth. If you get caught up on percentiles, uh, we're going to have uh, um, a, a, an animation, uh, possibly the end of the year or early next year, that will uh, go through a scenario of, of a uh, common way that you can interpret the use of percentiles and percentages that are used right through rainfall, pasture growth, ground cover, etc. Okay. Moving on to the time series, first we have um, the annual rainfall, and we always uh, do this April to March so that we can get the, the northern wet season in, so it's not on a calendar basis. This is from 1975 through to the most current year um, and, uh, and, and topped up every, every month here. So um, 
we can look at that and then we look in sync with the pasture growth, simulated pasture growth again on April to March basis annual annual uh, pasture growth and relate the, uh, the the pasture growth that has come from the the rainfall recorded here and and then you can use the percentiles up here and and look at the values here and and if you want to draw a line with a ruler across here and actually see where you are in the rainfall and and pasture growth here and and where, what what it's been like in the history then we look at the total standing dry matter so that's the biomass um, from from uh, previous years with the pasture growth added back on with minus feed intake and detachment etc like like we've related in the uh, grazing systems model, um, calculated on a monthly basis. Then we have the model outputted ground cover down the bottom. And you can see how that changes uh, across here with the seasons. Okay, well that's updated monthly. Uh, you'd access that seasonally to half a year and you do that for grazing land management decisions um, or when you're doing any best management practice uh, uh, workshops or, or modules of accreditation. Moving on to the next report and probably one of our most popular reports is the indicative land type report. Okay, so for your lot on plan or lots on plan, we have grazing land management, land types. And if you see down the corner here, we have the, the legend um, that relates the colors, the numbers and the, and the titles of the land types uh, polygons, which, which are um, depicted in the map here. Second page is a land type summary, which relates those land types again, the land type codes, but also the estimated area that are tied up with those different polygons of those different land types and the estimated area in terms of percentage, what the contribution is to those particular areas for the total area of the lots on plan. There's a shapefile attachment that you can use uh, in GIS applications uh, and for veg machines. So you can bring that into both those and uh, uh, that's just as an accessory shape file. You don't have to use it. It's, um, it's there, but it is instructive when you use Veg Machine. It's updated. Um, it's generally stat static, but um, there is a revision that, we, that has been done and I uh, hope to release it uh, late, late this year. Um, when would you access that? It's, it's a once off on purchase, uh, but, but for uh, GLM or uh, BMP, purposes, you would uh, make sure that you had that on hand. But also when you're doing infrastructure like fencing to land type um, and uh, uh, you'd use that to coincide um, fencing the, uh, the like type land types. Moving on now, so we combine the two um, and we make a rainfall and pasture by land type report. The first rainfall and pasture report was, was um, using Aussie grass parameters and it's used on a broad uh, area basis. If you're after particular land type material um, information teased out, um, this is the report for you. Now we um, go through the same information there where we have a summary, rainfall and pasture growth, fire mass, ground cover, time series listed all down here. We've gone through that um, as per the first report. But on the second page, we have the combination of the land types with, with the pasture growth. So uh, here we have the expected land type listed, uh, the code, the area, the percentages, and we also have some percentiles here for the last 12 months, the average 30th, 50th, 70th percentile um, across, across the board here for those land types. Now that's for in, in A class uh, condition um, and, and for based on native pastures. So uh, if you've got buffalo country, you might want to add a bit more on that. If you're um, if you're down to uh, cooch, you may um, have a uh, a, um, a subtraction there, a discount. Um, but also bear in mind that that's for a condition. Um, now down below here, we have the land types by by uh, ground cover um, in the same fashion here. So land types, um, the area percentage uh, last 12 months average 30th, 50th, 70th percentile. So you can use that um, uh, those percentiles to guide and your uh, the yield and cover inference. Um, this report is updated monthly, and you'd access that seasonally to half a year with stocking assessments, uh, grazing land management, and um, best management practice. 
Moving on to the rainfall and pasture growth outlook report, we have the outlook information here explaining how we, um, uh, we, we would use uh, the, the diagrams here, uh, which is the seasonal outlook of rainfall for the next three months um, and, and how it differs from, from the historical uh, wet, near average and, and dry um, uh, pie, pie sections here. Um, and over here we have the pasture growth probabilities and the way that we get the pasture growth probabilities is by using the historical analogues and it might be with the, the, the SOI phase here, we, we get those analog years and we apply them from the, uh, the pasture model that is run up to, the, to the, uh, the current point. So we get the antecedent conditions and we then run with the median of the, uh, of the climate for, for those, uh, those analog years um, and we'll get a dis different distribution to, to do the rainfall alone. So that's that's a good example of how how we uh, the uh, pasture growth probabilities can can differ to rainfall alone. Um, now that's updated monthly. Um, you'd access that ad hoc seasonally um, if for grazing land management or best management practice purposes. Um, however, we we have a uh, a new report, the pasture growth alert report, which we'll be showing in the next webinar. And we're possibly going to um, decommission this uh, report because the uh, new report um, is, is that much more in, instructive and, um, and informative. Moving on to the foliage projective cover report, FPC. And so it's the satellite imagery derived tree and shrub foliage projective cover. Um, it's for the most recently available image. We have FPC range in four categories. So here we have mentioned here, and we've got also uh, GLM land types across the, um, the uh, lot on plan of interest. So page two actually summarizes those, uh, those GLM land types here. You can see them uh, listed down through here, but also you get the land type area. But um, what's, what's very interesting is those FPC ranges across here, and then the breakdown into the, the hectares and percentage contribution of those land types into those FPC ranges. So that's, that's really good information um, to, to break all that up and, and, uh, and, and really easy to get through, through the forage system. Um, you are given a current uh, Im imagery uh, TIFF file, which uh, or you can use in a GIS layer um, system for your, uh, for your analyses. Um, there is a planned update on this um, in, in, in the near future to, to upgrade the, uh, the date of, of the uh, FPC image. Um, you, you'd access on uh, your property purchase or sale if you're wishing to adjust country, uh, pre or post clearing for grazing land management purposes or BMP work. Now we'll go over to the ground cover report, another very popular report, page one. Um, gives you uh, your normal introduction to the, to the material, but also the background information of the lot on plan, uh, our location map, but also the seasonal ground cover map. And this is for um, June to August, 2018. Now you can get have the choice of the year and, and, the, and the season um, when, when you order that report. It gives you the coloured uh, ground cover ranges down here, so you can interpret the, 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 uh, the colour uh, ranges here into the different uh, ground, ground cover ranges, but then it also takes you into a summary here, the cover levels and the percentage out of the total area that contribute to, to those ranges. Page, page two is, um, is very instructive. It gives you the minimum ground cover from 1990 to, um, to, the, to the most current imagery. Um, where for, the, for your lot on plan in a 30 metre um, pixel basis, it gives you a composite view. So it rates every 30 metre pixel against history uh, to, to relate what's been the, the minimum ground cover for that, uh, for that lot on plan. Okay, so um, there's your, your, um, your colour gradient there. And, um, and again, it gives you a, a, um, a ground cover map summary here of your cover levels and percentages. So you'd use that in, con in concert with the uh, page one, um, that areas that are, uh, uh, are uh, consistently um, uh, low cover and, uh, and cu currently low cover, you, you would um, 
wish to have a look at them in terms of uh, fencing or, or stocking um, density. Uh, page three has a cover time series, and we're going to discuss that in just a second. But um, there's also an accessory spreadsheet for um, calculation options. If you wish to um, play around with some numbers, it's all available in a, uh, an accessory spreadsheet that you can bring, bring into um, uh, Excel. It's updated monthly. Um, you'd access this seasonally to half year. Um, the reasons for uh, land condition assessments, GLM decisions, um, best management practice purposes. Now let's go into that page three. So here's page three where we've got a time series from 1988 to, to the most uh, current month and year uh, where we've got in the colours here, green cover, non-green cover and bare ground here with modelled standing grass cover. Um, now uh, how you would use these in terms um, of, of the other reports, we see the seasonality of, of, uh, of dry, wetter and dry years for, um, and this is from a Western Queensland example, but um, let's have a look at from the rainfall pasture report where we add in the uh, sequence here of, of uh, rainfall. And uh, I've lined up to my best uh, the, the, uh, the time series here and you can see how the rainfall is contributing to cover here for the good years and the lower years. There's lower green cover and um, and you've dropped down in, in non-green cover as well. So you can see that, and it's, it's quite plain, and, and that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, that, that's expected. But let's have a look at the other time sequences and add in the pasture growth. So the annual pasture growth here, and, and April to March, and we start separating it out a bit better, and, and have a look how uh, unrelated um, models here are, are, are really uh, working in with the, uh, the, the green cover, um, and then how, how the dry cover, uh, the non-green cover, works in here with the, the, the re reduced pasture growth um, annual years here. So that's quite instructive to put the two together there and you can do that with, with all the ground cover and, and mix and match the reports. But let's throw in the total standing dry matter time series and again um, we can see how the, uh, the contribution of TSDM has built up these non-green um, sequences and lower total standing dry matter in the drier years has contributed to a, um, a, a drop down there. So uh, a really good way to use, use these um, together in, uh, in, in collaboration. Moving on to the regional comparison report and um, probably the, the, um, the, not only one of the most useful um, uh, reports that we have, but uh, it's, it's, it's complex, it's complex information, but if you, Teased apart a little bit, you can um, you can take the bits out that uh, that that you need to 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 uh, to help the inference. Um, so the ground cover comparison for all dominant land types are related here, um, where your lot on plan for it is in the centre of a 25k radius here, and the 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 the, uh, the different land types are in different colours here. We relate in a percentile ground cover um, uh, time series here all those different land types, and the uh, the the beauty of this is to uh, see how that they all mix and match here, how they uh, compare with one another, and it is quite complex to look at that. Um, but throughout the report, we tease those out with with an average of the uh, all those land types, and then we tease the, the dominant land types out. And we're just going to show you one of those examples. So. Yeah, each dominant land type for a lot on plan, the distribution, and the percentile graph shows the cover against each land type ranked against the cover, the same land type within the region. Okay, so we're gonna move over to one of the land types on, on the, the report here, um, and it'll show this comparison for an in individual land type. So this land type within the, uh, the property here compared to the land type in the 25K surrounding here. So um, for this next graph here, it shows a couple of levels on, um, on land type within the lot on plan. So the, this is the absolute cover here in the blue line, um, and it's got quite high cover uh, moving along here. But over here on the other axis shows the, the, the shadings here of the region and how they, uh, how they move over time. And you can see in drier years here, um, the percentiles, how they rate it against history and how they drop out and, and fall quite low here. Now this shading here is repeated down here on this next time series on the percentile ground cover here. So this is relating your property of interest 
with with the, uh, the, the the properties of that land type uh, across time. And for this one, so let's look at the 50th percentile here. That's the median. So you're in the middle middle of all the data here, um, and and this property has just been a bit above the 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 50th percentile here above the median over time until this point here uh, and this has improved here and um, that's that's related to we um, a, a management change um, because all the climate is is similar within that 25k uh, radius and this is a good sign here that uh, from this point on some land management change has has increased uh, the, the the land uh, the, the, the ground cover for uh, that land type uh, compared to the others, the neighbours. Um, this is uh, this this uh, report is seasonally uh, uh, updated and four times a year, and you'd access it four times a year seasonally for land land condition assessment for grazing land management purposes or BMP. Um, you can also see Veg Machine. That's a a dynamic uh, uh, model online, and uh, and you can you can get the same reports uh, for, out of Veg Machine, but you can uh, it's, it's more interactive to get the fractional cover uh, season by season, year by year. Okay, let's move on to the drought assessment information report. It's a Shire-based broad outlook um, uh, report. It's sourced from Aussie Grass, so you you don't have to go to Aussie Grass and, and look at each report here. We put 26 multi-month maps um, in in one report, and they include rainfall, soil moisture, maximum temperature, pasture and growth, and biomass biomass uh, rainfall runoff, growth and run, runoff forecasts, the curing index, uh, green cover percentiles from um, uh, satellite. Shire Time Series is a new edition here where you go down on the first page here and there'll be a link here that you would click on on your, your PDF, take you back to Aussie Grass to give you a time series of that Shire. Um, and uh, I, I encourage you to do that. Um, this was originally for uh, local drought committees and, and assisting in um, declaration and revocation, but it's also very handy for uh, purchasing um, and, and sales adjustment, uh, looking around at your shire compared to the to the uh, the shires around you here, and we're going to go through a couple of the uh, the, the different slides of the uh, of that report. This the first one is uh, total rainfall, and you'll see that the um, all these little uh, uh, areas here with the um, um, uh, black squares are uh, contributing rainfall stations to to this uh, to this month. Um, we also have an Australia-wide snapshot that's repeated, so you can have a look at uh, not only your shire, but how it is in relation to, to uh, the rest of Australia. Okay, so uh, then we will have we can have a look at the one month available soil moisture relative to history for October, um, and, and see how that rates for your area uh, across history. We can look at the 12 month relative rainfall, so how the one, um, the one year rainfall is, is relative to uh, to um, the past history, then we can go from uh, the rainfall to 12 month pasture growth and just see if there's a difference there, what your uh, expectation is and what the, the neighbouring shires are like. The chance of exceeding median growth for the next three months. And um, you can also have a look at the median, what the actual median is on in that uh, report and have a look at the LEP score, what the skill is of the uh, of that actual the veracity of that uh, that that um, that forecast, that that outlook, um, and then uh, we can also look at the satellite derived green cover deciles relative to history. So uh, a lot of information in in that uh, report, um, and um, it's updated monthly. You you'd access that ad hoc for awareness, property and livestock sales, purchases and adjustment. But uh, as mentioned before, you can subscribe to receive that report every one, two, or three months at a time, when, on on uh, on uh, your request for that. Move on to the erodible soils report. Well, the erodible soils uh, assessment um, uses classification that evaluates uh, erosion potential here of uh, soil surface stability. So as we move across here, you, you have increasing surface soil erodibility and down this way, um, the colours will relate 
the soil subsoil dispersibility. So those colors are important um, in that, that uh, little matrix there to interpreting um, the, the maps that we'll just go through in a minute. Um, there's also an overall erosion potential ranking and it's given to uh, with a combination of the uh, surface soil and subsoil combinations. So currently only available for the Burdekin and Fitzroy um, uh, catchments, but um, as our soils people uh, get through the data, it'll be uh, available for more reef catchments. Um, so let's go and have a look at those, those maps. Um, firstly, there's the overall soil erodibility ranking map for you. Um, here's your, uh, your interested, interest uh, of a lot on plan um, and your, your color uh, code down below here. Next, we have the soil, surface soil stability map and the uh, subsoil dispersibility map. Okay, that's updated every five years or when there's a reanalysis, you'd access that on a once-off uh, property purchase, grazing land management or, or BMP purposes for in infrastructure guidance. Now onto the regional climate projections report. Um, here it is. And it has historical climate information and long-term climate projections for 2030, 2050, and 2070. It includes rainfall, min, max, and mean temperatures, potential evaporation, and vapor, average vapor pressure, which is uh, a proxy for uh, relative humidity. And as I was relating before, um, these are all the uh, uh, the ingredients for uh, plant. Uh, growth for pasture growth, but also um, has an impact on on animals and humans. Um, and if you have a look here at the variables uh, listed down here, you've got the historical um, uh, values, the projected 2030, 2050, 2070. Um, so it's interesting to look at those numbers there and see how they rate. Um, but also we have the monthly median time series and the historical projected uh, climate ranges where you can look down here for the, uh, the legend here. So across here, you have the, the monthly ratings here, and this one's for rainfall, um, for evaporation, for average vapor pressure, max temperature, mean temperature, and minimum temperature. That's updated every five years. It's an update to be released. Um, we'd access uh, this once on property, uh, adjustment, purchase or sale for a climate change workshop um, and for historical and future awareness. So um, who actually uses forage? Well, there's been 30,000 reports requested since 2011. There's currently 1,500 per month requested as of uh, this month. Um, there's a time series there. So it's really picked up. It's really picked up since 2015-16 um, uh, when we um, when we uh, have sort of uh, uh, gone out and, and tried to uh, communicate that a little bit better to the, to the regions. Um, and, and that's from 2,600 users. And a quarter of those are from the Queensland Government for Research, Education, Extension, Development. Um, and then uh, from NRM groups. But uh, what, is, what is really good to see is uh, uh, over 70% uh, from uh, other organisations which we might consider are property owners, consultants, agents, valuers. Um, and so what about those numbers? Well, it's, it's very heartening to see these numbers increasing here. And with those numbers increasing, um, we would consider that, uh, that people are uh, trying to make the best out of the inference from the reports. And um, we, we intend to contribute to that with um, uh, educational videos and being out in the marketplace a little bit more to, to explain how to best get the, uh, the, the maximum out of these different reports. Um, that's uh, greater than 35% of Queensland by area and it looks something like this. And there'd be a lot of uh, places uh, as we zoom in there that you can't see, but uh, that's a, um, a really good coverage of the reports since 2011. Let's uh, revisit those land management questions and how forage can assist um, with, with, with those. So is this season different from uh, last year or five years ago? Well, we could use the rainfall pasture reports, seasonal rainfall pasture outlook report, the drought assessment report. What parts of my paddocks are bare? Well, there's a regional ground cover report, the erodibility report, 
land type report, the FPC report, and of course, veg machine for the more interactive version. Uh, how many cattle do I run until next season? There's the rainfall and pasture land type reports, seasonal rainfall and pasture outlook report and the ground cover report. Do I need more water points? The land type report, FBC report, of course, veg machine. Why does this paddock have less cover than that paddock? Uh, the land type report, regional ground cover report and the FBC report. And we would use veg machine if you wanted a more um, uh, interactive model to use there. So a summary of the forage products. It's the latest technology that uh, assists with awareness and land management decision making. It's online free and easy to access. It has a track record over time, despite us uh, not really um, marketing that heavily. It's a niche market for graziers, extension staff, best management practice, consultants, education and policy. The, the reports mutually support one another in, in terms of analysis. Uh, with the, the forage product suite, and we showed that with our rainfall uh, report and, and the ground cover report. Um, the report information should be used in conjunction, not a substitute for hands-on monitoring and managing. Forage can be linked with other products, um, and you can use the sh shape files with GIS applications, Google Earth and Veg Machine. The reports will improve to be improved as, as we go along. There's joint support with best management practice uh, Department of Agriculture and NRM groups, and there's more prototypes in development. So watch this space, and uh, of course um, the next uh, webinar um, to show the new ones. Uh, so wrapping up, next webinar is the last in the Getting the Inside Edge series. Uh, it'll be um, again free property information to assist with grazing land management decisions, but this time it'll be new and soon to be released information. Thursday the 29th of December. Uh, November. Webinars are now available uh, at this location here and if you see below here on the uh, on the bar here you go to about and and follow to webinars and so that's we'll make our webinars available too. So questions and suggestions we welcome. Email the Long Paddock website at longpaddock or one word at qld.gov.au all available on the Long Paddock website.